Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. We are going to do a nail studio vlog today designing this set of press-on nails. It's kind of like a behind the scenes of how it all comes together. So first things first, I changed my nail studio around. I think I'm finally ready to film my nail studio tour in this space here. So stay tuned for that because it turned out really cool. I'm really liking how the functionality of how everything is laid out here. Uh, and the main reason that I needed to do this is that I wanted to bring a really nice sitting area in here for when my family hangs out in here because they do all the time and I also do a ton of my work on my phone so I wanted just somewhere where I could sit and get all of that sort of stuff done but here's a little sneak peek as to what the studio looks like If you watched my most recent video, it was an unboxing of this DK Beauty order. We go through some really cool products in that video. I also not only swatch all of the different products, but show you how I would use them too. So it's a really fun nail art video to watch. And this video is a continuation of that because we are going to use some of the products that were featured in that video. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get all set up here. You can see my little girl's Polly Pocket Village behind me. I told them that I would leave this set up, but I thought I'd show you guys. A lot of these were from my childhood and then Violet got a bunch of the newer ones for her recent birthday. It brings me so much joy to see my little girls playing with them. So if you see them in the background that's what they are I put my gloves on and I was all ready to sit down and start filming and then I was thinking oh yeah you should probably pull some products so I went to the DK Beauty website to make sure that they had the products that I was envisioning using for this nail design and I'm just gonna go and pull those ones so I'm looking for some butterfly plates that are outlines and then I wasn't too sure if I was going to use like any sort of lace images too so I pulled just a variety of plates that I thought would work I often get asked how I pick products for the different designs that I come up with and this is literally it. Like I can kind of envision what I want to do like in my mind and then I just pull products that will match that vision. I don't, I honestly don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but I also like know that the vision can change. So as I'm designing here and as I'm pulling products, I'm constantly thinking of like, okay, are these color combinations going to work together? Are they not going to work together? And I bring a lot of different products to my desk. And then you're going to see throughout this video, um, a little bit more of the trial and error process as I'm picking designs. Also, sometimes it looks like I'm completely zoning out like this. And it's literally because my mind is just racing with ideas. Now that I have what I need I just need to get set up to film so I get my cameras and everything all ready to go and then I'm also gonna grab some gloves and put some of those on too I have really been so bad at picking my cuticles lately it is just something that goes hand in hand with my ADHD it's a way that I I, I guess like regulate myself anyway uh, what I've been finding that when this happens I need more cuticle oil but I will not put it on so what I've been doing is putting it in my gloves while I work that way I'm getting that oil and I'm also not having to be really even think about applying it if that makes sense. Now we're going to spend 3,000 hours making sure that I have my cameras and my lights and everything all set up ready to go for filming. Honestly, I don't think people realize how long this part takes, just like adjusting camera angles and lighting all the time. <laughs> For Megan's set here, we are going to use the medium round. Megan has been a client of mine for a very long time and I know her sizes for all of the different nail operator tips. Uh, so I can just quickly grab the ones that she wears and get to work filing them and prepping them. I just file like the little nub on the edge off and then I also, after that is done, I'm going to take some of the operator tip primer and apply that kind of roughly all over the nails. It almost looks like I'm kind of like etching it in and that is on purpose. Up, we are going to create the background for the butterfly wings so I'm gonna take some of this shifter color and the accents brush that I featured in that video as well I'll just give it a little clean off here I love working with these type of iridescent shades as my background for different nail art there's literally so much you can do with them I talk a lot more about these type of shades and some different things you can do about them in my nail art workshops but they are fantastic for layering 
These are the stamping plates that I pulled. So I want the butterfly wing in the top left corner on that one. This one here, I really like this butterfly image. I wanted something that had uh, just the outlines and like a lot of details. And I wanted uh, some butterflies in some really small sizes. This lace one, I wasn't too sure if I was actually going to use, uh, but I pulled it just in case. Now I wanted to go for a stained glass look in this nail design. And I wanted to show you a way that you can use alcohol inks to make your own glass gels. So just take some of your whatever gel you want to use and drop some alcohol inks into it and if you've worked with the Coco and Claire ones or you have them in your collection some of them may have dried out uh, this has happened to a few of mine all you have to do is just add some alcohol back into them and I like to put some of the mixing balls from Claire Jelly Stamper in them too and then give them like a really good shake to bring that pigment back these alcohol inks are some of the most pigmented ones that I have used so I really love working with them there is a lot that you can do with them uh, even though I do find that you have to add alcohol to them every once in a while to bring back that consistency Now I like using alcohol inks or you could use pigments to do the same thing as well uh, to create your own kind of glass gels and this way you can pair whatever colors you have in your collection with the different nail art that you're using. Uh, side note, this Coco and Claire one here, it is like a metallic orange. It is beautiful. I absolutely love this one. It's probably one of my top alcohol inks from Coco and Claire and this one, this rose gold one too. Now that I have my products all ready to go, it's time to decide exactly which images I want to use. I know for sure I wanted to use that animal image with like the huge big butterfly on it and I was thinking that it would be best to do that on the thumb. So we're going to start with that and then go from there. So I can see my end result of what I wanted to be here. So I am putting my alcohol inks and my gel down kind of loosely to match that image that is right behind it. That's why I have it right behind so that I can try and line up where everything goes. Now it's okay with, with me if things do not line up perfectly. I do not mind that at all and you'll see when we get to the stamping part uh, why it's okay to do something that's a little bit messy like this because you can make it work I promise so uh, right now I am just loosely blending the colors together I'm not curing in between I do not mind if they marble at all or if there's a little bit of shading or gradient my main thing is to just get the products down Now after I had that nail done, I was trying to decide, okay, what do you want to do with the rest of the nails? So I just swatched down a couple different shades of some of the Luxio gel polishes that I had. And then I took this gel bottle, uh, the green one that I featured in that bottle, I believe it's called Mint. And I am just lining them all up here to see, okay, which one do you like better? And I knew I didn't like this one. And I originally was thinking, okay, I would stick with this yellow one. And then I ended up taking that one off too. And I was like, you know what, we're gonna completely take them off. We are gonna end up sticking with the green, but only for a couple of nails. I want the main focus of these nails to be those butterfly wings and the different butterfly images that I pick. So I'm only gonna have two nails that have that green. And we're gonna take a brief pause here because I completely ran out of wipes in my little basket. So I'm gonna stock that up and then get back to creating these nails. The other two nails, I'm gonna go in with that pink iridescent color from Accents as well. I wanted this one to be the background for different butterfly images so that when I stamp on top of them, uh, you're gonna see this really pretty pink shimmer. you can see sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what color is going to go on each nail and sometimes it takes some trial and error uh, but I did go back in and do another nail with this green shade too and then one more nail with the pink cove. On the two nails that have that pink cove color we are going to loosely lay out where I want the butterflies to be uh, using some ga gl gas gel glass gel here uh, so again I don't mind if some of the color is marble and I don't mind if it's not completely perfect as to where I'm gonna line the stamping up my main goal here is to just get my product on the nail here I have such a hard time leaving nails completely plain like just one color so I decided to take this top coat from Fusion on the mint color here and it looks so beautiful. 
And another thing that I talk about in my workshops a lot is encapsulation, encapsulating nail art, why I do it, what I like about it, uh, how to avoid the nails becoming bulky, anything like that. One thing I always do with encapsulating nail art though is tip the nail upside down so that I can get my gel to pool where I want it to go. Uh, after it is cured, we're gonna take it out, give it a little bit of a buff. Something else we go over in a lot of my workshops is how to hold your nail file, uh, how to make the tip stick onto the stand here, and how to to make like less bulky of a nail. Now to get ready for our stamping, I'm just gonna clean off all of my plates. I very rarely clean my plates off after I use them because I have to go in and clean it off anyway now. Uh, so I'd rather just do it once. That's why you guys see my plates pretty messy all of the time. I'm just using acetone to clean them. I find it to be the best. The stamping polish that I want for this is the sticky stamping polish number one. It is the black one. You could just use a plain black one too. I just prefer working with this sticky one. I'm just gonna get all of my stamping tools ready to go here and then I'm gonna get stamping down this this image uh, so I wanted to use the butterfly in the top left corner here that's what I had designed my design around and I stamped this butterfly wing down I wasn't really liking where it lined up I wanted it to be less liney and more look like a butterfly so I'm just gonna take some acetone here and remove that and I'm gonna stamp this again this happens all the time to me I will stamp an image down and then I'm not liking it I'm just gonna take it off and I mentioned that because I know a lot of times in social media it can look like it's just flawless and it's done perfect the first time that very rarely happens uh, in the next one that we're gonna do here I end up stamping this one down four times and a lot of times those things are edited out in videos, but stamping is not always foolproof. There is a lot of things that go into it as well. Even for somebody who has been stamping for 15 years. Can you guys believe that? I've been stamping for 15 years. But the reason that I wiped that off is because I wanted the little, like, um, what is that called? the antenna of the butterfly. I wanted this to be showing more. And no matter how I stamped it down, it just wasn't lining up exactly how I wanted it to. So I ended up just taking a brush and a dotting tool and adding my own little antenna. <laughs> Now I decided to go in and add some florals here as you can see that image didn't pull and I will very rarely wipe something off. If I can make it work to try it again I will try that first before I wipe anything off which is what you guys saw there. And I decided I wanted to add a little bit more coloring inside the flowers as well as some of the parts of the butterfly that didn't line up very well. So I'm just going to use that glass gel, the pink one, to do that. Now if you like any of these marbling techniques and such that you've seen in this video I do have a marble workshop launching very soon. It is in the pre-sale format right now so it is on pre-sale until April 4th and then it'll launch on April 4th and it is going to feature 10 different marble designs using alcohol inks, watercolor, a whole variety of mediums and there's also two bonus looks to it too so make sure you check it out if it's something that you'd be interested in learning a little bit more about. Okay the absolute best part top coating now we're seeing all of those layers come together all of that hard work everything that we had planned out this is the final reveal. I I love this nail. This one is my favorite. I think it is so cool. And then this one you can see a little bit more of that pink cove poking through. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Definitely comment below and let me know what you think of this style of video. I had a lot of fun filming more of a behind the scenes look at how I create these press on sets for my customers. Make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!